Welcome everyone, this is Denny with my YouTube channel, Why Is This True? And I'm going to continue with the series of uh, videos about Get Wisdom, primarily contacting people who uh, found Get Wisdom. And, uh, and today we have one of the founders of Get Wisdom, Brian Kelly. And so I'd like to uh, thank everybody for joining us and thank you, Brian. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I know we have a lot to talk about. So maybe you could tell us about your story and how you found Get Wisdom and, uh, or Carl Mollison and then helped us to create Get right. Wisdom so, and so go I, from there. I, I literally found Get Wisdom, right? Found yeah. dead Get Wisdom. <laughs> I love right. You too. Um, right. But yeah, it's interesting. You, you know, this channel that we're doing this video for, Why Is This True, is how I found you. Okay. So that's, uh, that's either a, a point of pride or regret. I don't know which one it is. But <laughs> yeah. We don't know yet. I don't know yet. We're still working yeah. on it. Right. Um, but I, I was watching, you know, I, it was the um, Dwight Eisenhower uh, channel. Okay. Hooked. Okay. So I was, you know, tooling around. I was, I'm always researching and uh, going through the videos of just different topics. And I forget, you know, how, I, was, I was doing a search on Dwight Eisenhower for some reason. Okay. Know, some Something I was researching, some little nuance or something. And I came across this video, you know, that you and Carl had put together. And so I watched it start to finish, and it was like, wow. So I looked to see how many videos you had done, and I think it, up to that point, you had posted what, maybe three, you know? So it was really in the beginning when you were right. starting the channeling series with Carl. And yeah, had... there was three, there was three uh, channeling interviews, and then there was a, a, prior to that, there was a three-part interview that I did with Carl. Yeah, exactly. And that was it. I, watched, yeah. I watched all of them. Okay. And when I got done watching them, there was at one point I said, so where, where are these guys? You know? And uh, so I, I did my little digging and uh, found out Carl was, a, is that Arlington Heights? <laughs> 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 He's driving distance from me. You know? Yeah. So I immediately, you know, checked out his site, which is my body. Um, no yeah, he's got, he's got two of them. Yeah. Yeah, he's got one that's more kind of woo woo, and then one that's more mainstream. Right, right. Yeah. So I, ch I checked out, you know, one of them. Got his phone number, and uh, it was a Sunday afternoon, about two o'clock in the afternoon, and I just thought I'd give him a call, and uh, he picked up on like the second ring, and I introduced myself, you know, told him what my interests were, and we proceeded on a two-hour conversation. Mm -hmm. right there, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I called him initially saying that I wanted to buy. A, um, a session from him, a clearing mm -hmm. session, because right. we were having some issues in the house here, um, and I thought this is this is perfect from what was described in terms of uh, the clearings and stuff that he had done. Yeah. Now I, I didn't even know about the Lightwork Healing Protocol at that point because none of your videos up to that point had mentioned it at all. And right. About it. Um, but he's when I said let, you know let's arrange where I can you know how do I send you money to pay for this and he goes well I got a better idea. Why don't you learn it yourself and do your, do it yourself? And it was like, well, that's weird. Where did that come from, right? <laughs> so I said, well, yeah. He goes, I got a training coming up in July. It was his first LHP training that he did here in Chicago area. Okay. And this was a conversation that was taking place around May. So I had to wait from May all the way to July to get into the training. But it was a one yeah. week. It was a four or five day training. And that was 2017, if I'm not 2017. mistaken. Yep, yeah. Yeah. And it was maybe on the second from last day where I approached him. Because at that point, there had been enough interaction in class that we knew each other on a first-name basis and that kind yeah. of thing. So I approached him and said, you know, um, I, I do computers for a living. I can, you know, I can help out. I can uh, set up a website for you, get some of these videos online, you know, uh, create an infrastructure. And... It was like, you know, his first reaction was, yeah, 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 nice, nice, you know. So, <laughs> I'll see you when I believe it type deal. And, you know, he, he appeared skeptical. Nice, but skeptical. Yeah, you know? right, right. And he said, well, let me think about it, you know. Said, okay, I'll. And I, I think he told me that he went home that very evening and did a channeling with Creator to mm -hmm. see if I would work out. And Yeah, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't let dust collect. No, no. Yeah. And uh, he said, much to his surprise, for perhaps even borderline shock, Raider said, oh, yes, this is, you know, you need to hook up with this guy and then work with him. And 
He, Carl confessed that he wasn't really thrilled with the idea at first, <laughs> you know, for whatever reason. Uh, but he's not in the habit of saying no to creators, so right. he, uh, he, he gave me the green light to get started, and, you know, the rest yeah, of Yeah, and, and the fact is, he doesn't get a lot of leading stuff from creators. So no. a, lot of, a lot of times it's encouraging, encouragement, encouraging, but it's somewhat ambivalent. So it's like, you know, it's always putting the human back in the driver's seat, and right. you're like, and you're like, oh, okay, well, nice try. Yeah. But and, yeah, but every once in a while he'll get like what you might call direction. Yes, in, yeah. in this sense, he basically got direction, I think. Yeah. And uh, he, he he basically said that he one of the biggest reasons he was shocked was because he had been asking creator he's been he'd been vetting dozens of individuals for the last couple of years since he basically started talking with creator and it was always. No, going to be problems here, issues here. This isn't going to work. He's not going to work out. No, 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 no. And Carl just got to this point where it was like he began to believe that nobody would ever step forward. And so when I, when Crater finally gave the thumbs up, it was like, I'm not sure I can believe this. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I it was five years but later. But interestingly, and, in this situation, you approached him. Yes. Yeah, and then yeah. I approached him, and uh, he gave me the green light, and uh, then I think we had a conversation with you, because um, he wanted to, you know, form something, and uh, we went from there, you know. Yeah, so, I was uh, traveling when it, when I first heard about it. Yeah. And we were we were on the road going uh, south from uh, Northern California, and uh, so, yeah, so my wife got to hear the whole conversation, and... Uh, yeah, so I, and I, I was a, I was a little surprised, but you know, it, it was at that point where uh, we were ready to to do the next phase. Love I mean, it, right. of something. You know, it right. was because the uh, um, well, you know what what happened is it is that um, I I was doing interviews with like pretty much all comers and right. people who not only people who had had um, uh, abduction experiences or uh, claims about SSP involvement that kind of thing. But people who had come away from that experience with uh, the feeling like they had something to teach, right? Right. You know, yeah. and and what was happening was there was a, there was a clear distinction between what we were learning from Carl's channeling work and what these other people were claiming, right? And right. so as I focused more and more on the work with Car Carl, there was a falling away. Yep. And and that extended into other areas besides just the YouTube channel. But I think there was a, a pretty significant loss of followers, and yeah, yeah just because yeah. it wasn't a, it was no longer a, f a free for, free for all in some ways, and there was, and I was in the, an unenviable situation of having to like navigate between these two narratives of one being kind of the white hat, you know, right. Cobra event, uh, David Wilcock, you know, th that kind of thing. And Carl saying, basically, through, not Carl saying, but Carl channeling these light beings and creator and saying, no, there's no positive e benevolent ETs interacting with Earth on the on the physical plane, on the Earth plane. Right. And it's like, okay, well, we don't, they both can't be true. Yeah, right. Basically, and, that was it. Yeah. And I, you know, I've been looking into the ETs thing since I was a teenager, essentially. And yeah. And I, I, I had told you before that I had actually uh, driven to North Carolina and spent a week with Dr. Greer in 2006. Right. You know? That's right. And uh, so Which I, is I'd kind always, of an extreme version of this narrative. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I'd always been hovering around this topic, um, but it never, it never hooked me. I, you know, I, I always thought there was inconsistencies. There was, you know, I loved the week I spent with Dr. Greer. It was fascinating. It was interesting. There were some great people there, but I, I came away from it unsettled. And I felt like I should just, you know, stay away. And I hmm. did. I, I didn't. You know, he actually gave me his personal cell phone number. I never called it. You know. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was actually invited. He actually invited me to get involved with him directly. You know, oh, I, I, I had uh, my credentials as an attorney, and uh, he he confessed that he liked what I brought to the table, and he thought I could really help with um, not only his ET stuff, but his free energy thing that he had going on at the time. Oh, okay. And that was, uh, I forget the name of that at the time, but it was, he, there was a lot of focus on that. And that really did interest me a great deal. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole free energy thing. But, um, no, it was just something that just didn't sit right with me. So I, I got home and um, 
kind of went back to what I was doing, just my generic research, digging here, digging there, flying under the radar screen. I just, I just never felt that I was ready to, to come out, so to speak, and, yeah. and try to do something. So you definitely preceded me in that feeling, that you, 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 you felt empowered to change your life, do something direct, and, uh, boy, I admire you for that. You know, that Thanks. was a first step that you took. Um, yeah. I, I waited for something to transpire, and it really didn't for me until I saw the video that you and Carl put together. Yeah, and, it, and it's fair to point out, too, that I was in a, um, a markedly different situation than both you, you and Carl. My wife was pretty much on board yeah. and no kids. Right. Yeah, and, I, I, I young kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah which, which, not, which not really, me. that's an, you know, that you can't just, you know, um, no, you just, I mean, there was a lot of things that we did in my, my married life with Jennifer that a lot of people couldn't do. Like I had, you know, this dream job down in Monterey and I said, nah, we're just going to, I'm just going to quit and we're going to move. And my wife's looking at me like, uh oh, there's a screw loose. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> but you know, uh, anyway, so, I mean, here we are. So, yeah. so, um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to account for things using prosaic explanations. No, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it was a it was a charted path. Um, yeah, and you know we've had readings with Carl's. You know, explored this whole thing with Creator, and one of the questions was, you know, why did it take so? You know, if we're doing all this, how come we didn't get together twenty years earlier? You know, or something yeah. like that. And, Right. Right. I said that that was a possibility. There was always a chance of getting together earlier, but things didn't work out. Right. And even though it's late now, we're better poised than we would have been 20 years earlier, or whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> However you want to weigh that out, you know. You're right. Um, right. So it, it um, yeah, I mean. It's... So can I ask you, like, so your healing experience with Carl, how did that, yeah. what, what was that like? Well, my concern was, um, we had some issues around the house, you know, and uh, I felt it quite literally haunted. You know, uh -huh. I, I, actually, I actually felt a, uh, a cold, like, wave go through me one time when my daughter was having issues, you know. And so it had all the earmarks of, of, uh, of being haunted, essentially, you know, yeah. having dark spirits and lost spirits around the property. This is a 150-year-old house. Okay. And farm. Okay. Um, and so it has a history, you know. And uh, so that's what that was what was uh, I was reaching out for. And so I, you know, I went to the training, learned to do like working in protocol. So you waited yeah. all that time. Yeah. yeah. With knowing that there was some something knowing that needed to be there. healed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But I went to the training and did the training, and then I did basically I did the protocol myself to clear the house. And this oh. resolved the issues my daughter, my daughter at the time was 11, that she was having. And it's been uh, pretty okay since, for the most part. You know, there, hasn't been, there hasn't been that issue. And my daughter's been fine. So wow. it really worked. It really worked. And that was the impetus to, to make it happen. Okay. And, um, and then, you know, from there, we just began to work on Get Wisdom, get a website up. Yeah. Um, choose the name. You know, I, yeah. I had actually registered... Get Dash Wisdom. I would have registered Get Wisdom itself, but it was already taken back in 1992. Wow! So I, I, I was. And I was that was it, was that a Christian organization that grabbed it, or do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, the Get Dash Wisdom was available, and so I re I reserved that, and that's I kept that registered for well, that was darn near 30 years ago. <laughs> and so, so what were you thinking when you did that? I always knew that I wanted to put together a website that would dispense wisdom, essentially, you know. Uh, and I had my own ideas, and, uh, you know, it's part of my ongoing research for years was in the back of my mind, put it, pulling together a narrative that I could put on the Internet. Uh, that mm -hmm. was, and I didn't want to repeat what was already out there. Yeah. I just saw no point in that, you know. Right. Was, so until I had something that was compelling, unique, and that I felt was true, and that really needed to get out there, I was going to hold off doing anything until I reached that point. Yeah. And I didn't reach that point until I ran to you guys. 
Huh. And then I, then everything inside of me said, this is it. Okay. Drop, drop what you're doing and invest 100% in this endeavor. Yeah. And that was five years ago, and that feeling has not changed. Yeah. I still feel like this is what needs to happen in the world today. Yeah. We need to get this truth out there as best we can. Uh, we need to get as many people praying as possible, you know. Yeah. Uh, doing doing that light worker healing protocol, we need to get as many people signed up as possible. And I really feel that that's the only way we're going to save humanity. Because mm -hmm. uh, I have a saying that I've tossed out before. It's like, if we can't save the world through prayer, then we don't have a prayer. Yeah. Because you can look around, and there's we're not able to solve anything. You know, the world is a disaster area. It's it's a mess. It's, and you know, Prater said just in the radio show the other day that it's a slave world. You know, and it's just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can see that all over the place. You know, so we have problems we've never been able to solve. It's just been a you know wash, wash, rinse, repeat. You know, <laughs> for millennia. Yeah. And I, I'm looking for how do we get off this treadmill? And the only thing that made any sense to me was God, you know, yeah. divine, divine intervention has to be the only way it can happen. But it, I didn't know how to bring that insight together. Man. And when I, when I finally hooked up with you and Carl, then it all gelled. It all, it all came together. Yeah. So what, Okay, so I, I had a conversation with uh, uh, another interview I did recently. I haven't put it up yet. Um, but we, but one of the things I said at the end was like, you know, maybe for a, mo a lo maybe most people, especially people who pride themselves in, in their ability to research, maybe the first question they need to ask and answer for themselves to their own satisfaction, either Carl is channeling God or he isn't. How, yes. how did that work for you? Or did or did you take a different approach? Or No, I, I uh, well, I... The uh, well, actually, at the time, you hadn't even done a career right. channeling yet. You're right. He was channeling archangels and his father. Right. That was the primary stuff yes. that was he was working with. So in he, developing the LHP and all yep. this other stuff. Yeah. So he latched on to channeling creator right around that time. I don't know. It sounds it, right. It, yeah. It the summer been, of 2017. That sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't. I probably already. I already met him by, by May. I had met him already. Right. So he had that breakthrough. So yeah, summer, summer, right, yeah. Yeah, right in that time frame. So uh, that's probably not coincidental. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, and and so my thing has always been always the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Right. Right. That you, you know, don't take anybody's word for it. Go to the source and then look at the entire content from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. So when I read books, I read the whole book. You know? Yeah. I look at every nook and cranny. I under, turn over every stone. So when the creator channelings were available to suddenly look at, it's like, yeah, this all makes sense. It all works. It's all tight. It's all integrated. It's non-contradictory. And that has remained the case now for five years, for thousands of readings, yeah, uh, for thousands of channelings, for thousands yeah. of questions asked, and it continues, you know. And we're continuing to bring in more divine wisdom. You know? So, so in the summer of 2017, you were able to answer definitively for yourself: Yes, Carl is channeling God. Yes. Okay. And because, did you feel, you feel like that was like the litmus test and that was a thing, the big green light, or was that just kind of like one of the, the stepping stones that was in that whole thing of like, oh, let's put this together? I believed in Carl. So the Lightworker Healing Protocol, he had developed that with the Archangels yeah. before he got the Creator in its early phases, right? It's been yeah. defined since, of course. Right. But the Lightworker Healing, the Lightworker Healing Protocol spoke to me in a way that nothing else could have. And it, it, it meshed with my whole, if we don't have a prayer, you know, if we can't say yeah, yeah. we don't have a prayer thing. Yeah. And that, that was a, you know, that, yeah. that, that, that sealed the deal for me. You know? Yeah. And anything that could utilize prayer to solve the world's problems was something I was going to be on board with. And I knew that for decades. 
you know. And okay. I could never, I could never find the right formula until we hooked Carl, you know. And so when you started channeling creator, that was just a natural extension. I was already sold, you know. It's like, yeah, you know, okay. all right. I'd say, you know, you had me at hello. It's like, you know, you had me at LHP. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you, yeah, you bought the cake and the icing came. Oh, goody. Okay. Yeah. And, and there was nothing ever to discourage me from that point forward either, you know. Right. You took the course and you used the LHP and it worked. Yes. And then the <laughs> channelings that came through were always confirming, were always reinforcing, you know. All right. And that, that's, that has continued unabated for five years now. Yeah. Because you were able to close the loop with Carl in right. terms of what were the specifics around your house and. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and it was so comprehensive. That's the other thing about Carl is that there's no taboo topics, none. Mm -hmm. With everybody else in the world, there's there's some taboo topic that there's some place you can't go. You know, there's some conversation you cannot have, and that's not true with Carl, mm -hmm. or with you for that matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can talk about literally anything, and that is what's necessary. And yeah. so that convinced me as much as anything else that we were onto something. Okay, so just for for our viewers. Um... So there's a there's a lot of um, you know, like new age informational portals. The one I'm thinking of now is like it's almost built like a, a thesaurus or like a, a dictionary, and you can go there, and it's got all these new age concepts, you know, uh, you know, galactic history and stuff. You could go there and you could look up all this different stuff. So in in all these different sources you know I, I mean i could rattle off some names but we probably don't need to do that i mean the, the usual subjects you know people that have you know uh pretty dynamic long term uh internet presence um so what give us an example of a taboo subject in one of those arenas just so people can um well it really it's everything from like the church to demons, to ETs, to science, mm -hmm. to, uh, you know... Medicine? The, the, the moon and the... And yeah, the moon. Moon shots. Yeah, and, yeah. You know... Pick, sexuality? Sex, yeah, sexuality. Pick any conspiracy that you could possibly conjure up, and Carl is not dismissive of any of it. Or, or I can't say that completely, he's... If he's initially dismissive, he'll still listen. He'll still engage in a conversation. He'll change his tune when there's evidence, when there's new information coming forth. Yeah, and he'll go and for I, creator. With, he'll go for creator with a skeptical mindset, but get new information from creator, and then change his mind. You know, right? And I, and I think it's important to point out that um, you know I'm a stickler for this thing because I'm sensitive to the cult accusation. You know, and there, at a certain point, you know, someone's just going to believe. Oh, okay, it's a Carl Mollison cult, and that's it. You know, you're not going to you're not going to Ever, ever present anything that's going to dissuade them of that notion. But on the other hand, you know, Carl is a human being. He has his foibles, his, he has his predispositions, he has his, you know, his political leanings and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but I always go back to, you know, people say, well, Carl said that, that and said, no, 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 no. Carl didn't say that. Carl channeled creator and then transcribed what came through in the, in the, uh, in the channeling. And that's what you read. Carl didn't say, excuse my French, a fucking thing. Right. Carl channels creator. Right. So let's get away from this Carl said notion because it's, act, you know, people think I'm picking nits, but actually that's a very uh, important distinction in, in, you know, staying on target, if you will. Yes. And yeah. it goes back to this question, is he channeling creator or is he not? I you mean, know, I'm Carl, not going to worship Carl. Sorry. No, no, no. And even no. creator says, don't worship me. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. Uh, the, you know, Carl and I had this conversation the other day around one of the radio shows. Yeah. That um, that I put into the question. I said, "Is this similar to what happened in the Jim Morrison case?" And Carl came back and said, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> I said, "Well, you know, we did, we did the Jim Morrison channeling, right?" He goes, "Yes." I said, "And in the Jim Morrison channeling, there was an automobile accident that he drove by, and he took an onboard spirit from a victim yeah, of one of the." Yeah, that's right. Carried that spirit with him. I don't know what the rest of his life, you know. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, here's a case from Teresa Caputo that looks very, very similar. You know, mm -hmm. it was a, a police officer that she had did a reading for in a mass group reading, 
And this officer told the story of how there was an automobile accident, similar, similar situation. And he was doing compression on this young man as they were loading him into the ambulance. And the young man died. And the whole time that he was doing that, he was saying, hang in there, buddy, hang in there, buddy. You can make it, you can make it, you know. And, and the young man died right there in front of him. He went on to say that for the next, I don't know, God, almost a decade, he thought about this man daily and had a deep-seated grief that made no sense. And so he was always constantly going over in his head the accident scene and whether he did enough to save the young man. And he was worried that the young man was okay. And this kind of obsession was chronic and it was disturbing and it went on for decades, for almost a decade. And I thought, that's just like the Jim Morrison's, you know, case. Yeah. And sure enough, Creator Channel, you know, he asked Creator about this particular case and that's exactly what happened. Uh. And in fact, Carl had to do a spirit release move. Oh, okay, right. Just just like last week. Yeah. To free this poor man of this uh, attachment and send, yeah. send this guy to the light that he, you know, we should have gone a decade ago. Yeah. And creator said that, you know, unfortunately, this was a lost opportunity. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm not being critical of Teresa Caputo. She, she's amazing, you know, yeah. really, really amazing. But there, you know, there's not a lot of healing going on other than yeah. Yeah. maybe it's a little bit of a cognitive revelation that can have some healing effect. But it's not getting at the deep problems. It's not getting right. at the deep layers, you know. Right, and so that's one of the criticisms that car- that creator has had of these mediums as of late, is that uh, they do a wonderful, they're doing divine work. They're all they're all on a mission life. They're all divinely inspired, but they're only doing so much, and they're not, you know, their efforts alone are not going to save us in the end. You know, mm-hmm. more is needed. So, yeah. That's so what so what about this idea? Like, so one of the things that Carl was doing, I think, around the time that you and him had met he was out there looking for because he was starting to get all this information about you know how prevalent the et thing was in his healing work and it was cropping up i mean initially it was five percent of his clients had some kind of et interaction an abduction or something like right right five percent so i mean it's a little bit specious to extrapolate that out to the the general population but still it's a a fairly large number so you know, then we started doing the channeling series. And it was like, okay, the ETs are on, on everything, and so, and then, and then in the midst of that, then he goes to Creator, and then um, I almost lost my train of thought here. But I mean, that it's one of the barriers in um, in the you know the other thing we talked about yesterday was it was is that you know, leading with the healing aspect is probably a good thing for Get Wisdom to do because, right. as you said earlier, proof's in the pudding, right? Yes. So if something's going to get your attention in your life, irrespective of whether you believe in ETs or not, right. and that's a loaded question, um, um, if, if there's some healing going on with yourself or your family or people that you interact with, you know, and then you notice that, then it's like, okay, the credibilities might extend to other areas, right? right? Exactly. But exactly. still, um, I, I wanted you to talk a little bit about more of that, how the ET and the healing thing may kind of interrelate and how that, ma- and how that whole problematic concept extends into like how is get wisdom going to grow how are we going to get a, a quorum of people forming a partnership with the divine realm and some of them using the lhp to actually turn this thing around right well you know it's funny because i i sent you um, a little clip you know a five second clip which i i didn't uh you didn't get a chance to hear yeah Prof- professional wrestling okay I, for some reason i've i've been reminiscing about the days in the, 19, the 1980s when I used to work in a group home for mentally, mentally ill adults. Mm-hmm. And every Saturday we'd watch, you know, through oh, okay. wrestling. You know, okay, all right. Watch, watch wrestling. And, okay. and I, I kind of got hooked on it, like everybody else, because it's a right. soap opera. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. You know, and I'm fascinated by the whole notion of Vince McMahon today is worth $2 billion. And he built that fortune on wrestling promotion and you know wrestling is by itself wrestling is not very entertaining if you think about it it's really yeah. not you know yeah if you ever go to a college meet you know yeah, yeah. With real wrestling you yeah. really got to be into it because otherwise it's like this isn't that interesting to watch yeah so to take an activity that's inherently not that interesting to watch and then turning it into a spectacle where 
you know, yeah. fast forward 30 years later, the guy's worth $2 billion. Yeah, that's everybody. an achievement. Yeah, you know, that's an achievement. So maybe the wrestling thing has something to show us about promotion. You know, I, I don't know, but it's it's just a thought I had, you know. Yeah. Um, we have, we have, because certainly promotion is where the rubber meets the road. And I think we have to, to somehow figure out how we need to do more promotion wise. I, I, I don't know. I'm thinking along those lines, but, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we do have topics that are inherently problematic because they're being suppressed, you know. And so one of the things I'm trying to do and thinking along these lines is how can we build a pathway? That's what this was about, by the way. Oh. Uh, so at the bottom, I have atheist. Yeah. And at the top, I have get wisdom. Okay. And so there's a journey here that maybe we need to think about how we can walk people through. Oh, gosh. So That's so, aggressive. Yeah. So it starts with <laughs> it goes to afterlife. Because yeah. You know, you can't, if you don't believe in an afterlife, nothing else matters, right? Yeah. So the, the first tenet of atheism is there's no afterlife. Not that there's no God or angels or any of this stuff, no afterlife. Because the, the conversation ends right there if you don't believe in an afterlife. Okay. So I thought, well, let's see if we can begin to find a way to show people that there's an afterlife, you know. To tell, to help them climb the ladder to get wisdom, and so I, you know, started researching books like this, you know. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Gary Schwartz. Yep. Gary Schwartz. You know. Yep. And and Gary Schwartz, I don't have the, I don't have it in there right now, but in this book, he did controlled experiments with famous mediums. Uh, John Edwards was one of John Edwards was one of them. Yeah. Uh, Christine Northrup was another one. There's a couple other really famous ones. And he did exactly what the skeptics all claim that nobody's ever done, which is put the medium in a dark room, so to speak, where they can't see who they're channeling, they have no information whatsoever, set up controls to make sure that they have no insight into who the topic is. Kind of like remote viewing, right? Yeah. You know, the remote viewing protocol is, I give you a, a sequence of letters and numbers, A, J, T, yeah. 6, 7, 5, 2, 3, that's right. your target, and then you go do whatever. Yeah. And says, well, nobody's ever done this with these mediums. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's not true. It's yeah. right here. He's, right. He's done all that. And what they found was an 80% accuracy rate. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that kind of settles it. <laughs> yeah. 80, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's game over. Okay? Right. If you all look right. at this, it's, it's basically game over. Yeah, and you know, anybody who says ah, I don't believe it, well, have you read it? No. Yeah. You know, so you're right. reinforcing your beliefs by avoiding information that can yeah bring them into question. You know? Yeah, and that's always a problem. So then, of course, if you now now we're getting into the area of where the ETs are, because their their outlook is complicated. You know, because after after you might be convinced there's an afterlife, and keep in mind that. You know, born again Christians think there's an afterlife, right? But they don't believe. But they think mediums and psychics are of the devil. So yeah, that's a, that's, a, yeah. that's an issue. Yeah, that's a mainstream uh, Christian view. There are there are some Christians that you know they're not going to buy into that that strongly. But yeah, but but you're right. You know, if right. you go out and look at the uh, the mission statements of the churches and whatnot, that's largely what you're going to find. Right. Yeah. So it begins with afterlife, and then it moves up to mediums and psychics. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And I have this little like thing that this is the ETs, this uh, bracket here. So the ETs kind of believe in an afterlife, but not an eternal afterlife. So they, when they die, they know that a consciousness kind of carries on for a while, kind of an echo of the former self. And that's the, where the whole thing of the uh, deceased dark soul ET spirits. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. these are these are powerful beings in the, you know, the difference between a deceased Anunnaki, for instance, and a deceased human is dramatic in terms of their ability to navigate the lower astral planes. Right, 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 They're right, right. right. And, and to team up with the dark, the fallen angelics, the dark spirits. Well, not just team up, but tell them what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the difference is, is that the dark ET spirits still have 
a connection, a, a, a life force energy connection to the divine realm to keep them around. Yeah. So they don't need to parasite off of anybody because they still have a direct connection to creator. There's a tenuous connection. It's creator's about ready to sever it, you know, because yeah. creator's been, but we know, because I, I know from a channeling that from what Carl had done that, uh, that these ET spirits that are really a bigger problem than even the dark fallen angelics, you know, uh, they still have that life feed from Creator because there's still a chance to save them. Is the argument, yeah. you know? So the the psychic and all all the ETs are psychic, much more psychic than a human. You know, a typical ET is ten times more psychic and intuitive in that not necessarily intuitive but psychic. Right. Which is a distinction that people might wonder about. But all the ET civilizations interact with telepathy. Yeah. They communicate with telepathy. So. Right. Their outlook on life after death is complicated. Yeah. And so they, they do realize that some consciousness continues on after the death of the body. But eventually, many of them will fade away and go away. And they don't know what happens to them. They have theories, but they don't believe in the divine realm. So And they don't believe in reincarnation. Or well, they well actually that's not true because they do track humans from life to life. Yes, but they they consider that um, they don't see themselves in that same paradigm. They see that they see that as unique to humans, and it's just a you know kind of a, a ongoing metamorphosis that they're still trying to un to. And they think it's connect. They think it's a physical phenomenon related to DNA, yes. allegedly, and that's right. why the Greys are so interested in right. human right. DNA. Right. So they don't believe that humans have eternal souls either. So, but they do think there's some kind of a group consciousness interactive. They see humanity at the, kind of like an ant count, you know, that. Any individual ant is not important, but the whole hive is important, you know. So, they, 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 yes, it, it's a, you know, their science obviously has holes in it. Their science is not tightly connected. There's, there's pieces missing that they theorized about. But they're light years ahead of humans. In technology, yes. Yes. But. Spiritually, they're not. But, spiritually, they're not. Yeah. But here's a distinction, right? Did skeptics exist amongst us 150 years ago? Of course they did. Kardec, you know, encounters skeptics all over the place. Well, it's 150 years later, and back during the time of Kardec, there was they weren't even washing their hands before they did surgery, right? Yeah. You know, so we've come 150 years later. Now we have cell phones, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we have magnificent technology, but has the spirituality of the skeptics transformed or changed at all? No, not at all, right? So, yeah. Uh, it, it just extend that out now to the ETs, and they have essentially that same kind of skeptic mindset that never transformed, in spite of the fact that their technology went off to be millions of years ahead of ours. Yeah. The and the technology has really kind of created this false illusion of safety and superiority, yes. and yeah, and the, and this ability to be continue as a sociopathic being. And be able to say quite confidently to others and to yourself, hey, we're doing all right. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're yeah. completely dependent on their technology. The technology yeah. is their identity. Yeah. You know, their their whole self image is built around their technology, technology. And their ability to dominate other species. Right. But that's yeah. no different than the typical skeptic today. Yeah. Their whole shtick is science, right? Yeah. It's all science. But, but there's a lot of skeptics who don't revel in their ability to control. You know what I mean? That there's that sociopathic element in the ET realm that's very it's a driving force in their society and their you know, like for an reptilian it's like it's an honor to kill your parents. Right, you know, right. That's well, a, that's one of the ways that you can like Well we, we have to take note of what Creator said. The Creator said that secularism will lead to depravity. 
yeah. and psycho and psychopathology. It, it's inevitable that it will get there. Yeah. And left alone, the natural progression is for secularism, atheism, to end up right in psychopathology. Right. All right. Now, you say, well, I know lots of skeptics. They're not psychopaths. Some of them are wonderful humanitarians and very loving people. Yes. They're divine humans still. They're not they're not ETs, they're human. Yeah. And that means that they are less than a hundred years old, which means they've been in the light just recently. Yeah. And they're Where still getting they're, impulsed. Still getting impulsed. Well, yeah. And many of them, you know, may have been a priest in their past life. You know, I mean um, right. you know, they, they they still have the divine spark within them. But if they stay on the secular path, that's going to gradually change. Yeah. From life to life to life. And then eventually, and the biggest danger, I guess, is that they could end up at some point dying, ending up in limbo, and then never, never being able to get out of limbo. Yeah. Because there's no, there's nobody there to rescue them. Yeah. And, you know, Creator keeps that lifeline going. And this is a question we'll have to. Ask, this is a, this is a difficult question we're gonna have to ask Creator. You know, which is, if if this project fails. And humanity is destroyed. I have to think that at least a third, if not half, of the people are going to end up still in limbo. They're not going to make it back, you know, as a result. But now the question is, who's going to rescue them? Because there's nobody left to, yeah, to ask for a rescue. Okay, here's another radio show. Another radio show. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, which, I'm not which, even sure I want to hear the answer to that one. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, we're we're in it for the for the uh, for the success due to the investment. It's important to point out, creators also said there's no real problems. So this whole divine human experiment could fail, but it doesn't mean that you die and go away necessarily. It just no. means that you're not going to have the uh, the human experience to return to. Well, if you make it to the light, then it's not an issue. Yeah, sure. you know, I'm right. concerned about those that don't make it to the light because right, right now we're told that. Anybody that's not in the light requires a rescue. Yeah. They're not able to get there on their own. Yeah. And it's a huge backlog that's actually getting bigger. It's a, the problem is worsening. It's not improving. Why do you say that? Uh, because that was actually revealed in a recent radio show. Uh, okay. That, so I that, thought it was getting better because there's well, more. We're here now with the Light Worker Healing Protocol, but there's fewer and fewer people praying. And there's fewer and fewer people praying for the deceased. Yeah. So we're coming along to kind of, you know, maybe change that, hopefully, and, and then turn it around. Yeah. But right now, the trend is still downward, unfortunately. Okay. So there's more and more people getting stuck in limbo, and there's fewer and fewer people actively rescuing them. Okay. And we're, obviously, our mission is to turn that around. That's what yeah. we're all about. You know, yeah. we, we have to, we have to educate people and get them on board. So your original question, it's like, well, how do we... How do we move forward with this and get a lot more people involved? That is a critical question, of course. Yeah. I, in some way, you know, I was thinking about because because Gifford and I talked about this quite a bit yesterday, and um, and and I think he, and, you know, the wheels were spinning for him too. And we, you know, we didn't we didn't come up with anything anything earth shaking, but I kept thinking like, you know, there's a lot of things that creators not going to tell us about um, what the ETs are doing or not doing. It's a dynamic situation. They, you know, they're, they have the ability to go back in time, go forward in time, check what they did and everything. And it's right. like, well, you know, if we pull a rabbit out of the hat here, why, I mean, it stands the reason that creator's not going to give us a whole bunch of uh, information about that because it's just, you could screw the pooch right there, you know? So right. it kind of makes sense to keep us in the dark, meaning you and me and Carl to some extent about what, what's going to happen. And, or what you know, or what could happen, yeah. and and I and I think there's also um, you know slap my hand, but um, I think you know Carl's probably privy to some stuff from his channeling work that he's not going to tell you or me or anyone else for that matter. I'm sure that's the case. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because no, no doubt it's it. it's not only dangerous for him to utter right. it, right. but for him to pass it on to you know. His, co his working partners, just for right. the simple yeah. fact that our thoughts can be read. It's well, not a don't... private. It's not a private realm, except for when we're asking for protection. And otherwise, yeah. game on, you know. And they have the upper hand. The ETs have the upper hand. Well, we know that, you know, we're traveling from New York to L.A. Let's say, you know, and 
but there's a thousand ways that you can get there from New York, right? Yeah. And we're not nec- we're not going to be privy to whether we drive through Kansas City or whether we drive through Oklahoma City yeah. on the way to Los Angeles, you know. Yeah. But we but we know where the destination is, and that's that's really what we need to be focused on. Yeah. Yeah. You know the the meandering, you know, especially if you don't have it planned out ahead of time. If you just uh, disembark from New York, say I'm going to go to Los Angeles, and you yourself don't have a a route mapped out. You say we're just going to go. We're going to fly by year. You know, we're just going to we're, we're going to take any roads we feel like taking. Again, there's there's a thousand ways that you could get there, and even you don't know. And you're the one doing the driving because you chose not to plan it yeah. out ahead of time. You know, right. so. So we know where we're headed, and that's really what's most important. And we know what we have to do right. to create the outcome that we want. Yeah. And that is we have to get people praying, empowered prayer, and the light worker healing protocol. Everything else is superfluous. Everything else is not irrelevant, but it, it's not nearly as important. Right. So that's we have to keep our eyes on that mission. You know, that yeah. we have to inspire people to, first of all, wake up to the problem. Second of all, wake up to the idea that there's something they can even do about it. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that think, well, what's the point of even thinking about this stuff? Because I can't do anything to change it. And that is the problem right there. Yeah. We have to change that mindset. We have to empower people. Yeah, and that, that is one of the primary goals of mind control. Yes, that right there. I mean, most of the acti- most of the energy that's deposited into this whole mind control effort on the ET side, especially to the human side, to a lesser extent, is to get people into that state and to yes. believe that firmly in their soul that you know I am I'm not going to be able to do anything about this. What are you talking to me for? Exactly. And, yeah. And that is we have to try our best to change that outlook. You know, we yeah. have to try to transform that thinking into empowered thinking. Where what about I, what, I what about this idea like okay so somehow get wisdom gets a big influx of money and we're spending you know ten thousand dollars a month on Facebook ad, 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 advertising and somehow we catch on in China and the whole thing goes viral and you know and now all eyes are on get wisdom see you later bye what's how how do you see that I mean what well I mean, obviously you know a backlash is something we have to be concerned about. You know, if you get if you get more visibility, yeah. But I I remember asking about that, uh, or Carl asked about it, like right, a long time ago, um, three or four years ago, in fact. And it was like, well, you know, if we become visible enough to make a difference, then the ETs are going to want to do the backlash thing, right? And yeah. the answer the answer was, you'll be too big and have too much visibility to do that too. Uh, so we have to kind of, you know, when it goes viral, not if, but when, because I can't think about the, the if thing. When it goes viral, it's going to go viral in such a way that they won't be able to stop it, is my understanding of how it has to work. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, because I, I, I looked at people, um, you know, I, I'm kind of interested in these, like, um, you know, whistleblowers and stuff, the ones that make it and the ones that don't. Right. You know, and and trying to draw distinctions about that. And then one guy that always uh, that I was always very interested in was Ron Paul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the guy's still alive. You know, even his yeah. son is still alive. You know, I mean, his son's not really following in his footsteps. But I mean, those people are very interesting to me. You know, and I and you know the the um, you know the critical thing I've kind of fallen back on is like, well, they got divine protection. Otherwise, right. you know, or or, or that. Phenomena you just talked about came into place. Like, you know, they missed their opportunity to get rid of this fly in the ointment, and now he's not a fly anymore. You know, he's standing on top of the damn jar, and there's too many people that know about this guy, and we we can't turn him into a martyr because right. it's going to backfire on us. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's, um, you know, Conchetta Bertoldi is one of the mediums that I've studied. I've read her book. Who's that? Conchetta Bertoldi. Okay. Is her name. And okay. She's a famous, famous medium on the East Coast. Okay. And uh, she's got some best-selling books, but just not, I'm not surprised you haven't heard of her. I didn't hear of her, hear of her either until I. Yeah, it, it's not really my my wife's interested in that stuff. I'm not that interested. I'm interested in the other, you know. Yeah. Like, I, one well, of the things I'm interested in, just just so people know, is like, what is the disclosure movement coming up with now? And right. the, you know, like the latest thing I saw was this 
David Wilcox now being interviewed by Mike Adams. Oh, geez. <laughs> so, okay. Well, anyway, could be, go, could be interesting. So, know. sorry for interrupting, but go ahead. But, but, so, Conchetta. But she said that this is a promising time because she is successful and she ha- she's making a difference in people's lives. Is she able to be herself without fear where 300 years ago she'd have been burned at the stake? That's true. That's true. So she does she have her own like cable TV show or something like that or what? Do, no, how does she? Um, Teresa Caputo had the the uh, TV show. Okay. The Long Island Medium. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I know her. And um, and then there's other, you know, kind of um, superstar mediums, and one of them is a guy named John Edward. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Books, you know. Yeah. Um, and. I think I sent you a video where they, that South Park had done a little uh, oh. thing on him. Oh. They did a whole show on him, South Park. On John Edwards? On John Edwards, oh. yeah. And basically they said he was a fraud and a scam. At the end, they uh, they anointed him the biggest douche in the universe. And so, <laughs> and so it, it, in fact, I even memorized a song. It goes, uh, here he is, the biggest douche of the universe. In all the galaxies, there's no bigger douche than you. Oh, my you gosh. You reach the top, the pinnacle of douchedom. Good going, douche. Your dream has come true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. You know James von Prock? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, looked in, I know of him. I, I haven't looked at his material. I'd like that. Probably will at some point. We actually, Jennifer and I, in better times, um, went on a cruise with him. Wow. Okay. In Tahiti. Interesting. In better times, and um, yeah, it was interesting. That yeah, it was interesting. That's a yeah, whole yeah, di- that's a whole different yeah. show. But anyway, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's my biggest exposure to the whole medium thing. But but right. yeah. Okay. So I've been looking into these, you know, um, people because uh, there's a lot to learn, and we've done three or even four radio shows now with mediums as the topic and the right. kind of subtopics that we're tearing apart. in a generic sense. Not like we don't yeah. like get like one of the things that happens with Get Wisdom is we get we get emails like, "Can you check into so and so and tell us whether they're authentic?" Or you know what I mean? It's like right. so it's kind of like we're, we're trying to trying to avoid the uh, you know the clearinghouse vetting yes, industry. Yes. And, and, you know that's and, not. But we do get. We have been. You know, Creator has vetted, like Conchetta Bertoldi, he's vet, Creator's vetted, and um, Barbara Caputo, and uh, Barbara, Barbara. Yep, vetted yeah. Barbara. So, uh, but 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 just very careful how they're vetted. You know, it's yeah. like, well, they're able to do this, this, and this, but not this, this, and this, so to speak. And here's where they're kind of at. But they all. I know for a fact that Kachev Bertoldi, Teresa Caputo, and John Edward all have divine protection. They're all in mission lives, and they all pray. In fact, I got this book yesterday. Ah, interesting. So, I, yeah, it literally arrived yesterday. So that's another one I'll be looking into. Um, so they all pray. So they all have divine protection because they all pray. They all pray before they do a reading. So you know how Carl says, yeah, you know, have to do the whole thing to bring in safety and all that. Well, they're yeah. doing essentially the same thing, yeah. not as detailed, not as concise, but enough to protect them and their work. Has there ever been an explanation of why these these individuals have not been alerted to the ET problem? Is it just because they're not asking? Yes, essentially. Yeah, that's, excuse my French, fucking amazing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, well, I just I like. Learned. Uh, you know, a detailed study of these people, and they're not talking. For the most part, they're not talking to archangels. They're not talking to creator. You know, yeah. They're talking to their. They have maybe a a relationship with their guides and guardians. So in the same way that Carl has a relationship with his deceased father, yeah, they have their own. In fact, Cheddar Bertoldi called it her God Squad, which is I thought was a pretty good term. You know, yeah. And the God Squad consists of their guides and guardians. And we all have guides and guardians. Yeah, we, we do. Have at least, all of us have at least two guardian angels. Yeah. All of us, you know. So they're interacting with their guides and guardians, but many of them are doing it <clears throat> kind of a haphazard way, where they see symbols. Oh, yeah. So, and, in fact, if you ever watch uh, 
like John Edward, Teresa Caputo. Teresa Caputo even says, okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a money clip and a can, a chuck full of coffee, you know, a chuck full of um, nuts, coffee can. And she goes, and that's my symbol for somebody hid money. So did you, did, did they hide money? Oh yeah, we hid money, you know. So she sees symbols or like, you know, sometimes people will guess because she'll guess it. She'll just pull a name. Yeah. There. Yeah. So, um, it, was this guy's name Andrew? And it's like, how did you know that, right? Yeah. And how did she know that? Because she sees a friend of hers named Andrew. Yeah. And so yeah. she says, okay, was, is it Andrew? Is, yeah, and even Carl, Carl says he uses he has symbols too, like for really graphic, um, violent scenes. Yeah. He'll see a right. symbol instead of the actual... Right. Which is kind of a, a means of protecting himself from that, and which I've become very sensitive to now doing this trauma work with with Helen, which right. is you can see how draining that is, you know, having that yes. in your face day after day after day, you know. Right. Right. Anyway, yeah. So they they see, she, there's a whole catalog. She has a whole library of symbols that she uses, and it's always growing and expanding. So yeah, I've, I I literally sat down and watched all 15 seasons. Of the Long Island Medium, I have seen every single telecast Long Island Medium episode. What is what wow. the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> I don't know. I gotta hook you up with Jennifer, my That's wife, because she she'll watch that stuff too. She she really likes to watch that. that well, I, I yeah. watched every one. I took notes and I I made notes of all the most interesting readings, and so I've used some of those to, for questions for creator to to get the, uh, the police officer one, for instance. That was okay. One. I, okay. I got that because I watched literally every episode. But I'm really doing a deep dive study on the mediums, how they do what they do, you know, the effect they're having, and what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Because, again, we want to try to understand why they're limited. You ask the question, well, how come, you know, how come they're not asking about the ETs? Yeah. And, again, it's literally because they're not asking about it. Yeah. And, that's what that's what we were told before about yeah. some others that are they're divinely hooked up, but they're just not asking the question. And Teresa Caputo says that I only ask for good things. So if I hear anything negative, it's only to help you. But I only ask for good things. And if they're not in God's white light, she says, I can't talk to them. Yeah. And that's fine with her. She doesn't want to know. Yeah. You know anything negative? And in fact, there was one reading she did in episode uh, season three, episode five, I think it was. Um, she had a couple where the woman was killed by her ex-husband. It was a murder yeah. suicide, and the woman was talking in such a way that she didn't sound like she was in the light. Uh. But while Teresa was talking to him, she like recoiled and she goes, "Oh my gosh, I hear him." He's calling me a whore. <laughs> and he's just, oh, he's disgusting. He's disgusting. He's disgusting, you know. And uh, my guides and guardians are keeping him away. I can only hear him. I don't see him. And uh, this is weird. I, I, this almost never happens to me. So she's aware that dark spirits exist. Yeah. In a sense, he was a hybrid. You know, he's a hybrid spirit. Because okay. He was, he was, right. And um, so she's aware of the problem. But she wasn't able to do anything about it. And we asked Creator... And creator said the two of them were still together in limbo. Uh, so both Carl and I have done uh, LHPs to get them out. You know? Okay. So, you know, okay. again, but back to your question, she's not exploring the, those topics. Okay. She, doesn't want, she doesn't want to. It scares her too much. And that's, you know, it's fine. She, what she's doing is amazing. And okay. she's, she's helping a lot of people to a certain level, but, you know. Yeah. So, um... We're crunching up on an hour here, and I okay. think I think a follow up is probably going to be in order because there's a lot a lot of stuff to digest. And I'm starting to realize that there's a lot of things that we could talk about that they're not going that people aren't going to get on uh, the Get Wisdom website, right? Um, just as a result, perhaps of the research that you're doing behind the scenes in service to the radio show, which you know we need we need to give that a plug because it's one of the few places you can go on Get Wisdom and get something in a in a bite sized survey right. yes. because a lot of it like the channeling interviews are typically like two hours long um you know the the one of the things that gifford pointed out yesterday that was just a, a mind blower is that when we started out with the channeling series it was conceivable to get a one sentence answer to a question which never happens anymore. never happens right 
And Carl and I used to do channeling series, uh, you know, the channeling series. And we'd, I'd do 10, 12 questions, and we'd, we'd knock it in in an hour. And that nice. those days are over. Now we're doing five questions, and it's like two, two and a half hours. I know. And I think, you know, we've... Carl's aware of the problem, and we're you know we're tr- you know we're trying to work on it, but it's it's a pretty torturous process just because of the thorough nature of the whole enterprise, you know. Well, you know, it, it's and the, and the, the need light- of these light beings to really get right. their story out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's yeah. like I have this one window of opportunity to tell my yeah. story. I'm going to use it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and it's really a lot of times it's not their story; it's the divine realm story for right. humans, and that's what becomes this repetitive. House on fire, house on fire, house on fire. The same old story told a thousand different ways, every single channeling. So they do get kind of like redundant. Right. Uh, but but before we wrap it up, there's one other thing I want to talk to you about uh, for our viewers' uh, benefit. And this is this whole Alan Kardec thing. And right. the fact he wrote a book about mediumship. Yes. This is the English version that I recommend. It's called Lucnos, L-U-C-H-N-O-S. And I've tried to read it a few times Uh not not in service to the research for the channeling series that I get, but just for my own benefit and stuff. It's really hard for me to read because I realize how far we've gone past what they were up to in right. this book. Yes, yes. Uh, and I, I probably need to look at that myself, actually. But, uh, yeah, it's a continuation. In fact, Carl told me um, that he wants to write a book on mediums. I don't know if you heard that. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, he, he's... he's uh, He's cranking up to uh, put a book together on mediums. So he's yeah. got it to kind of a, maybe a volume two of the book you just showed there. Yeah. To, to, and to one of the interesting book. things is that if you look at this book and the way it's laid out, it's very similar to what we've done at Get Wisdom in the Divine. Uh, it's a question answer format. That's what that's what Alan Kardec did in this book. That's its organizational organizational baseline. And right. Carl. You know, right. you need a team of horses to pull Carl off that idea for how he presents information he's learned. It's Q and A format, and we checked. We had a, a guy in South Africa actually went and checked this. He looked at the uh, Divine Wisdom database on Get Wisdom website, and as of December twenty twenty one, there's five thousand eight hundred and ten questions posted there and answered. On yeah, that. I know. Yeah, <laughs> ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, and yeah, okay. The other thing I wanted, uh, do you, did you want to say anything about Alan Kardec? Yeah, no, like, just other than um, you know, it, reincarnation is real, and uh, it's not that surprising, given what Carl is doing, that this is a a, a leg up on Kardec. This is yeah. uh, this is the next level of Kardec. Yeah. You know? And uh, so what Carl is doing, you know, and the funny thing about Kardec was that he was kind of like me in the sense that he was a researcher. But he wasn't psychic. He right. wasn't a medium himself. No. He just simply did research. Now, the interesting thing about that is, theoretically, anybody can do research, right? People might say, well, I'm not psychic, so I can't channel, you know, like Carl can. And that's true. Only one in 50,000 people can, because we asked Creator about that number. One in 50,000. Okay? Yeah. But anybody could read research, right? If, if they wanted to. Yeah. You know? And so... Anybody, quote unquote, could have been Kardec, but it was Kardec that dedicated himself to studying mediums like nobody else had. Yeah, you know. So the reward for that is that this time around, he's given intuitive abilities and doesn't need the mediums, and that was a direct outcome of his service as Kardec. Okay. All right. So now you have Kardec on steroids. <laughs> also known as Carl Mollison. Also known as Carl Mollison. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you have that consummate researcher combined now with a built-in mediumship. Yeah. Which Kardec did not possess. So it's the yeah. next level. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, we're probably definitely going to have to have a follow-up because what I wanted to close with has escaped me. The other, my last question for you is gone. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, I th- well, I, this is different, but I, I think we should probably give a little bit of lip service before we, we move on. Sure, uh, it's yeah. m- one of my favorite subjects, but I wanted uh, our viewers to see what you had to say about it, too. That's mind control and how oh. that plays such a huge role in what we're well, facing right now. That's the headwind we're facing, unfortunately. And... Uh, 
one of the reasons why I'm trying to gather as much in terms of compelling arguments as I can, and argue, you know, they're not very effective. Argu argu arguing with people and, and you know trying to convince them through verbal persuasion that they need to change their mind um, is not terribly effective. But unfortunately, it's kind of all we got. That yeah. and doing the prayer work. So we have yeah. to try to make as much positive usage out of what we actually have available to us as we can. The mind control is a huge problem, obviously. And people that are able to resist the mind control are few and far between, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, we have to, part of the, what we have to do is try to look for the needles in the haystack and attract to our project those that are free enough of the mind control that they can participate, learn like we're healing protocol, do empower prayer, and help turn the tide. Yeah. But we have to do a better job of sifting through the hay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So that's that's the task, and that's where you know, getting a little bit more public, maybe, and and coming out and and challenging some of these assumptions that are out there. Yeah. You know, maybe in a more direct fashion. I don't know. Carl's not comfortable with that idea. No, and and I I vacillate. I go from um, you know, like I like I really didn't want to do any interviews for why is this true? I mean, at, you know, the usual subjects were just. Um, you know, I, I was, they were repellent to me. I hate to say that, but they were. I, you know, I, don't, I didn't want to talk to anyone who hadn't been at least given the get wisdom thing a fair shake. Yeah. And, and, but at the same time, it's, it's understandable why most people would look at get wisdom and go, nah, oh, I, ain't yeah, drink, yeah. I ain't drinking that much coffee, you know? You know and it's just, I actually, I actually had a thought for like a documentary series. And I would I would host it. I, and I I'm an attorney, so I, I'm attorney Brian Kelly, and this is the court of public opinion. Yeah. And then I would basically mount a defense of our stuff. The, yeah. Mount a defense of mediums. Mount a defense of uh, of look of this even. You know, um, this was Dr. Wayne Dyer's last book. Oh. Look at the title. Oh gosh. Prince of Heaven. Yeah. Dyer was, everybody knows, everybody's heard of Dyer. Yeah. You've at least, you've at least heard of the name, right? You've yeah, heard right. Of the man. Oh, yeah. So he wrote a fabulous, unbelievable book about children's memories of heaven. Yeah. People don't know about it, and but you can make that connection, right? You can go out there and say, you know, this is the this is the court of public opinion, and today we're going to defend Wayne Dyer. Why does Wayne Dyer need defense, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is a way of thinking about how we could be begin to be a little bit kind of out there, maybe a little bit outrageous, a yeah. little bit entertaining. And it's going back to that kind of that rest, professional wrestling promotion thing, you know. Yeah. You got to be entertaining. You got to you got to be engaging. You got to, you know, yeah. get people on the edge of their seat a little bit and thinking about stuff. So, well, I'm, and, I'm working on it. <laughs> Sifting through ideas here. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, because because we need it, you know. That, that, and we need. It. I think I think it's time for another shot in the arm, whatever it is. I don't know. I mean, my my version of it now, and I discussed this with Carl, was that you know we did a press release thing, and we you know we had this these lists of journalists and people that are you know uh, you know, uh, you know uh, f more fringe, newsy, you know, open to the ET idea, and there's more stuff coming in mainstream media, so they're getting more traffic with the. With the whole idea of disclosure and what the Navy's talking about, da 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 da, da. and so, so you know, I actually bought this program. It costs us thirty bucks a month, where I can find email addresses for these people, and I'm slogging through and making email lists and sending these initials out to everybody to do LHP sessions for them and stuff. And the results are dismal with yeah, a capital man. D, and yeah. it's very time consuming, yes. and. And even even where I have inroads, where I have personal inroads, nothing is happening. Yeah. And I'm and I'm going okay. I you know I don't, I need a little bit of encouragement to do something like this, and I'm not getting any. You know, it's not happening. So I said I got I need to go back to the well. You know, where did all this start? It was on the Get Wisdom. It was on the uh, the Wisest True, um, you know, uh, YouTube channel. Which may be short lived because of what YouTube's doing right now. I said, but I got to give it a stab before it goes away. Right. And so I, so I got this email. You know, says like, you know, you haven't posted any videos, so we're going to demote you or whatever. It had something to do with monetization, which I, you know, I never really bit. 
because I just felt like a, a short timer there, always did. And uh, so I thought, you know, I need to go back and just see if I can find people who are willing to talk about Get Wisdom and just go with that for a while and see what happens. Because there's 4,000 subscribers out there, many of whom probably have put their subscription on pause, but they're still out there. It's a somewhat captive audience. So I said, let's let's give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am think yeah, the more I think about it, you know, Attorney Brian Kelly, and this is a court of public opinion. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And uh, and just you know, this week I'm defending so and so, you know. Yeah. And and try to you know lay the foundation to get them to get wisdom. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I, I'm not sure if I would. I mean, I'd be more than happy to to do it under the Get Wisdom banner, or you know, just create a whole separate production company that I would probably call Maxstar Productions. You know. Yeah. And uh, and just do it there. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing wrong with pointers, you know, and that's yeah. what, that's one of the things like, you know, we discussed earlier, it's like whether I should just abandon why is this true? We thought, well, no, let's leave it on there because we could put the more risky out like, you know, like the MAP stuff we could do right. on get on on why is this true and kind of, you know, be a little yeah. bit more circumspect on it with get wisdom, you know, because This is the court of public opinion. This week I'm defending Gary Schwartz. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it could be an could be in a, you know, make it a 45 minute or 50 minute show, you know. Why not? Why not? It's worth Why a shot. Yeah, if you, if you, yeah. Time is time is the, the big problem for most of us, especially yeah. for you. Um, you know, I, I go through I go through episodes where I do have a little bit of time, and other times where it's forget it. You know, it's just yeah. it's not going to happen. You know, oh, I need to breathe, eat, and sleep, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, <laughs> we all. Do <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll right. wrap it up, and I want to thank you. Brian, for joining me and for doing this, taking some time out of your Saturday. Anytime. Uh, which is a, like the middle of the day for you and you're only on one of your few days off. And um, we've got, I've got um, another interview that I did earlier with a fellow. You might want to check it out if you're seeing this video for the first time. Two, uh, two other folks so far that recent uploads to Why Is This True? So you can check that out. Please check out Get Wisdom, yep. obviously. And... Uh, and the you know the radio shows you guys are doing the radio shows every week. They're Voice on Voice America. America. Yep. Yeah, they can, they can access, go to the Get Wisdom website, and under Healing or Hidden Truth, there's a radio show uh, link, and it'll bring you, you. You can see all the episodes. There's over 150 of them now. Other Amazing. yeah, 150 right. Yeah. And and there's about 50 of them on or other alternative platforms um, like Brighton, Odyssey, BitChute. Get Wisdom has a channel there, and what I'm doing is I'm taking out the intros, the commercial breaks, and the outro. So it's just Brian and Carl on the radio, start to finish. Those are easy to download as MP3 files, and then you could just you know make a make a list of them, you know, or you know put them on a thumb drive, you know, in, the, in your car and stuff. And uh, and the, and the, and they're topical, they're short, relative to the other material that you have you find on Get Wisdom. And then the other thing I want to plug is the ebooks, the free ebooks that are on yes. there. Yeah. So you just sign up as a free participant member with your email address, and then there's these pretty nice ebooks. And I, I've I've went ahead and uh, actually printed them out. And the way they're formatted and stuff, they turn into just these beautiful books. Oh, nice. So yeah. you know, I get these you know spiral bound with the and they're they're and inside they're you know it's all color. And, oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah, and they they and they 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 work well like this if you don't like to read on the internet. And uh, so here's the one on uh, false channeling. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the ebooks are are another way in addition to the radio show where you don't have to eat the whole elephant to get a really good idea of what gets to get wisdom's all about because everybody Absolutely. doesn't have a lot of time. Um, okay. All so right. That's that's it. Thanks, everybody, and I'll be back with another interview soon. Bye-bye.